In this video, I'm going to show you what to do when you have a neighbor that hates your chickens. And later on, if you have a Snoopy neighbor, I'm gonna teach you what to do. Hi there, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also be sure to subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breed. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. In an ideal world, everyone would love chickens, but the truth is some people hate them. They look upon the living creatures as noisy nuggets. So what happens when your neighbor hates your chickens and starts causing a commotion? This is certainly an unpleasant situation, but normally one which can be amicably resolved. In a bit, we'll talk about some strategies that might defuse the neighbor and avoid all sorts of unpleasantness in the backyard. When your neighbor first complains about your birds, listen to the complaint carefully. Is it the noise, smell, or rodents? If there's no specific complaint, ask what they would like you to do. If the response is get rid of the birds, politely but firmly assure them that this is not going to happen and again, try to get them to state why they object to your birds. Let's talk about chicken zoning. If you have such a neighbor, you first need to know your legal footing. Are you allowed to have chickens on the property? If so, how many are roosters allowed? Is there a setback distance? A quick note, the setback is the distance any outbuilding must be from a fence or boundary line. If the zoning laws are ambiguous, contact your local zoning officer and meet with them. Explain your problem and ask for suggestions to resolve the problem. This indicates to the town board that you are a reasonable person who is trying to address the issue. Most zoning laws don't allow roosters for a very good reason, noise. <laughs> If I were a night shift worker living next door to a rooster who loves to crow, I would not be happy. So if you have a rooster, think long and hard about removing him or try a no crow collar. Next is smell and waste complaints. If your neighbors are complaining about the smell, perhaps you need to clean the coop and pens a bit more frequently. Chickens certainly do have an odor. Although you and I might not find it offensive, some people might. Try to keep the smell down with frequent cleaning. This is especially important during the hotter summer months. You should apply PDZ or some other type of absorbent material to keep the ammonia levels low. Change the bedding frequently and dispose of the soiled material. When you dispose of the bedding, don't just throw it in the compost heap. It will attract flies and lots of them. Try to put a covering of dirt, grass clippings, or similar over the top of the heap to damp down the smell and keep the flies and rodents away. Turn the heap frequently to deter anything from nesting in there. Now, let's talk about rodents complaints. Where there is a free meal, you will have some sort of rodent in the residence. Usually it's chipmunks, but if there's an abundance of food, you will certainly attract mice and rats. Keep your feed stored in rodent proof bins. Metal is good, plastic is okay if you check it frequently. They will chew a hole through plastic in no time at all. So keep your plastic feed containers in a secure area. If you do have a problem with rats, you will need to address it quickly Rats carry all sorts of diseases. They will steal eggs and eat an enormous amount of feed and if hungry, will eat chicks. If you choose to use poison, do so cautiously. The poison is not rodent specific and it will affect whatever eats it. I have found the best way is to drop a bait block down the hole, then fill the hole with pebbles or small rocks. This way the bait is safely underground and the rats will nibble away at it. As always, you should keep a record of all that you do to prove you have addressed the problem. The truth is that the vermin were probably in the neighborhood already and simply moved to get a better feeding ground, the chicken coop. Now let's talk about noise complaints. I love the sound of a rooster crowing in the morning and the girls performing the egg song, but not everyone else does. If it's legal for you to keep a rooster, there are a couple things you can do. Just how noisy is your rooster? Some roosters are much noisier and more insistent than others. So how can you reduce this noise level? If you keep a rooster, you can try him with a no crow collar. It works similarly to a no bark collar for a dog. If you don't want to try the collar, another suggestion is to put him in a dark crate overnight and let him out at a reasonable hour. The rooster may not crow until he sees the light of day. It works for some, but not for others. You could also try and get an idea of how much of a nuisance he is by checking with your neighbors. If you get a response of, he doesn't really bother me, then all well and good. But if you get, well, he is noisy, but I didn't want to complain, then maybe it's time to quiet him down. Now let's talk about predators. But first, before I do that, I want to make sure that you stick around because you'll want to listen to the last couple ones coming up here. Many people fear that having chickens will attract predators. Newsflash, they are already in your backyard. 
Creatures such as foxes, raccoons, coyotes, and possums enjoy urban living. The food sources are innumerable, like garbage, squirrels, chipmunks, cats, small dogs, and rodents. These creatures are elusive, but not shy in searching out food. In fact, when we lived in the last town, we had two raccoons that would come into the house to the cat door to eat the cat food. This soon stopped once we realized what was happening. As responsible chicken keepers, we should do everything we can to protect our flock from attack, so the predators will move on to easier pickings. Now let's talk about disease. In 2015, avian influenza had everyone in a tizzy. People were calling for flocks in urban settings to be slaughtered because they might pass on the disease. Now that it's been several years, the truth of the matter is very few backyard flocks got sick. Now I know last year, a insane amount of chickens were also dealt with as well, sadly. As far as the 2015 avian flu, the chickens that did get sick were shown to be contaminated by wild birds or waterfowl or chickens chickens brought in from an already infected flock. This is a time to educate your neighbor about some chicken diseases. Chickens can be carriers of salmonella, listeria, and campylobacter, but you get salmonella, listeria, or campylobacter from improperly stored or cooked food. So the simple act of keeping chickens is not gonna cause an epidemic of anything but fresh eggs in your neighborhood. Now let's talk about property value and appearance. Perhaps your neighbor is concerned about selling their house and the impact a flock of chickens will have on the property's value. There isn't much factual evidence either way, but anecdotal evidence suggests that many people buying a house with chickens for neighbors actually enjoy the experience. Some say that it enhances the value of a property, giving it a more country feel. Moving on to appearances, is your coop a palace or a pigsty? If it's the latter, perhaps you should improve its appearance a little bit. You get the idea, a new coat of paint, clean out the run, do some repairs. A clean, well-kept coop and run are far more attractive than a dirty, run-down coop. If after a good clean, your neighbor still isn't impressed, is it possible you can move or disguise the coop? Is it possible to move the coop further away from your neighbor? You have something like a chicken tractor, this should be easy enough. But if your coop is fixed, that may not be possible, although a small coop should not be impossible to move. If you can't move it, can you deflect or muffle the noise somehow? The old saying goes, good fences make good neighbors, has a lot of truth to it. Even a couple of fencing panels placed strategically so the noise is muted and deflected from the neighbor's yards. In terms of disguises, an idea for a more long-term and environmentally sound idea is to plant a hedgerow of fast-growing trees or shrubs. It will depend on how much space you have, of course, but trees such as Lombardi poplars or Arborvitae grow quickly. If you have a small yard and don't want light blocked by trees, consider shrubs that grow to around three or four feet tall. You can plant these either as a windbreak line or place them around the coop and run. They will provide shade and cover for your hands if you free range them. And now the last part here, defense tactics. Let's say something seems fishy going on like your neighbor might be trying to mess with your chickens. This hasn't happened to me. But if you've done everything you can, the neighbor is still unhappy, but legally can't do anything. And this is dragged on for some time. I might be worried that the neighbor might employ other tactics. If you feel that the neighbor in question might try to harm your birds, try some of these ideas to deter any malicious acts. Try getting a security camera set up on the coop. It can be eye-opening to see who does visit the coop at night, hopefully not your neighbor. Another security measure is a solar powered motion detector light. The sudden light will deter predators as well. Another idea I came across was an alarm for the coop door. You could easily set it after locking up the coop and disarm it in the morning. In general, most neighbors can get along very well if you can go at least halfway to dealing with the neighbor's concerns. Usually the complainer will give a little. I hope you never have to deal with neighbors like this, but if it happens, at least now you have a guide. One thing I urge you to do is keep a record of everything you do and your neighbor's response dates, times, etc. It may come in useful if things get really unpleasant. Finally, you can always resort to bribery. Few can resist fresh eggs as a gift. That's going to do us for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed our content, if you learned something new, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And with that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. If you like this video, please be sure to check this video here coming up.